Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to do some basic EQ in Logic. Now I'm just going to give um, general guidelines. It might not even, uh, it, it's not really going to pertain to these sounds. It's just going to be general rules, ballpark ways of attacking or strategizing how to EQ something. Um, so first of all, we have to turn on the EQ. So if I have both of these tracks and I want to EQ them, they're both coming out of out one and two. So if I'm going to apply an EQ to the whole mix, then I would come over here, click on the EQ button. Now this is specifically geared towards like live recordings, not um, uh, pop songs, because with a pop song, you would want to EQ each track uh, very differently. Like if you had a drum set here, I would want to EQ the bass drum very differently than I would want to EQ the, uh, the overheads for the cymbals, but um, what we're talking about here is this is a trombone and a guitar and they're both playing um, and I want to get a very natural sound so I want it to sound like they're in the same room and I want to uh, EQ them the same. So this would be something like if you have a live classical recording. So if I double click on EQ, it brings up the EQ. Now these are the various EQs you have. You have your high pass filter, your low pass filter, your shelving filters, and your peak filters. The high pass filter are, is going to let the high part of the sound pass. The low pass filter is going to let the low part of the sound pass. The shelving filters are going to be like what's in your car. Um, you can boost the highs or the lows. Here it shows it looks like a tuning for it, but that's like attenuating or, or cutting out the lows. And this is boosting or turning up the high at the lows as well so you see boom down and this thing means up this one turns up the highs and turns down the lows I mean turns down the highs sorry so anyway normally when I start out I just turn them all off because when you reach down here you can grab hold to any of them that are on so it's just kind of easier to just say okay I'm gonna click here and then I know that guy's on and I'm not gonna grab anything else by accident uh, the master gain you usually don't want to mess with that in the EQ uh, section at least the analyzer is one of our greatest things now if I play this if I play my sound back you see I have a short loop here of this chord <laughs> I can't really see what I'm doing, so um, if I were to apply EQ, I wouldn't really know what I was doing. So if I turn on Analyzer, I mean, except by ear, I could do it by ear, but to show you what's re a really great tool in Logic is this Analyzer thing. And it shows me the frequency range of the things that are coming through the computer, or are coming through the uh, system. So if I want to apply this high pass filter notice there's a lot of low energy down here well generally that's not going to be good I mean I know the chord that I'm playing is doesn't have 20 Hertz in it uh, the guitar doesn't go down that low uh, the trombone doesn't go down that low or it's definitely not going down low that low here so I can boost this guy turn this guy up and notice 24 decibels per octave that means that it's cutting out for every octave if we start here at a hundred Hertz like let me get it right at a hundred Hertz that means at 50 Hertz or one octave down it's 24 decibels lower you can turn this up or down by just doing that so 6 DB would mean at a hundred Hertz then 50 Hertz so an octave lower that's decibels per octave at 50 Hertz lower I mean, you know, so an octave below 100, half of 100, so an octave below, it's only 6 dB lower. So then at 25 hertz, it's 12 dB, which is not enough really if we just want to cut it out as quickly as possible. So 48 decibels per octave is as much as we can cut out, which is quite a bit. So from 100 hertz to 50 hertz, it's pretty much 48 dB lower, which is essentially gone. If I bypass it, okay. 
So, now that's a very extreme high pass um, filter, but sometimes you want to do that, especially if there's like rumbling on the stage from your feet. Um, if the mic was on stage when you were recording, uh, your feet can transfer a lot of low energy or low frequencies to the recording, and you want to get rid of those. So the next thing I'm going to do is a peak filter. And the way a peak filter it works, it's like a mountain. It has a peak. So if I just drag it and move it up, you see there's our mountain, there's our top. So it's turning up everything in between here. So a lot of times what you want to do is turn down or attenuate between 300 and 600 hertz. Somewhere in there. Like I say 300 to 600 hertz, uh, I don't mean always cut out that entire range. Sometimes it might need to be a little lower. Sometimes it might need to be a little higher. You have to use your... Um, ear for that, but this is a generality that uh, is okay. I think you know it's a generalization <laughs> that uh, is actually uh, true most of the time. So if you want to get rid of this boxy sort of muffled sort of quality, what you can do is get rid of between 300 and 600 hertz. So I'm starting here at about 310, and cutting only out about 3, 3 dB, 3.5 dB. And for Q, the easiest way to do Q without explaining it here is that if you grab on the tip, you see the little Q shows up. And if I pull it down, it makes it um, the bandwidth or the, what it's cutting out get wider. And if I push it up, what, what I'm cutting out actually gets narrower. So you can... You, it's very seldom that you want to cut out a whole lot or be this narrow. Let's check it out. It's very, it starts getting unnatural sounding. If you've cut out a whole lot of stuff, right, check it out. And I can turn it off and on up here. That's a very extreme EQ. So it's usually something like this that you want to cut out. You can hear the difference when I turn it on. And on. I said you may or may not want to do this, but I'm just giving generalizations. If this might not be the best thing for the sound, I'm just showing you generalizations. So the next thing I want to do is add a, another peak filter. And grab it, and it looks a little different. I'm going to boost up around 2K. Because that gives it a little presence. Now, if you can't really hear any difference, what you can do is really boost it, like I said, not to do but just to see what's living up there. In other words, to hear what's up there, to see what you're actually turning up. So when I do this, now you'll hear. That kind of shh. I mean, that's way too much, but it at least gives you a little idea what you're cutting up or what you're turning up. So I can narrow it. I can flatten it out by pulling it up here. So now, the last thing we could do is add a shelving filter. And this is like what's in your car. You can either boost the highs or the low, uh, boost the highs or boost the lows. And sometimes you have a mid, which would be a bandpass filter, but we're not going to talk about that. The, um, the deal is, though, this is basically going to turn up sort of the presence of the sound. We don't actually hear, if you're like me and or have ears that don't hear 19k anymore uh, this isn't really going to be something that you hear per se uh, but it's going to be something that sort of changes the headroom the presence the the um, uh, the transparency they call it of the sound it just sounds natural and open and and not cluttered sometimes when you turn this up 
could start this, move it up closer to like 10K. So without our EQ, with our EQ, I'll toggle it on and off. So it's not a huge difference, but it, in a way it is. It's, uh, it might, it's not the kind of thing that you hear and say, oh, that is so much different. I can't tell that they're the same thing, but uh, you can definitely tell that it's been EQ'd. And like I said, this is not necessarily what I would do to this sound to make it sound better. I'm just giving general principles. So cut out the low end if you don't want to hear all the uh, nasty rumbly bits. Cut out the mid-range between 300 and 600 hertz. Uh, if you want it to be, uh, if you want to get rid of some of the muddiness, boost 2K. If you want to bring some of the presence out and then boost around 10K and above slightly. Uh, if you want to have a little more headroom or uh, transparency in the sound. This is a better word, transparency. But the... Rule of thumb is don't do it too much. Like the most I'm doing here is four decibels besides my high pass filter, which that can be uh, quite drastic if you want, if you like. And because you're trying to get rid of, completely get rid of things that aren't actually there. Like if this was a flute recording, I know it doesn't go down to a hundred Hertz. So get rid of that. Um, and so the general rule is keep it subtle or else it'll sound uh, weird and unnatural. And this is especially not uh, what you want for classical music. You want it to sound as natural and as much like the, um, as much as you can like sitting in the room hearing it happen yourself. <laughs> 